give us inclusivity, strong growth, etc. Um, is he acknowledging that he has failed as a finance minister? Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> my regards to our viewers and listeners this morning. Um, I am even surprised where you are starting from. If he has failed as a finance minister, then the world has failed. It is a fact. If he has failed, I'm not saying you are saying he has failed. You are asking a question, which is good. But if he has failed, then the world has failed. It's very simple. How so? Um, I came from, I'm not, when we say this, people deceptively try to say we are comparing Ghana to one country. I don't believe in that. I believe in comparing a country to global performance or continental performance. Anybody that understands these things will appreciate what I'm talking about. Because countries have different dynamics. But we talk about giant economies that we even depend on, such as UK, US, and the Asian countries. I came from UK 2016. It's good that, sorry, on the 16th, I think last month, it's good that my brother went to Sheffield, which was close to my school. Their base rate, which is government interest rate, if I should put it, base rate for banks, post-COVID had been increased 1,600%, from 0.25 to 4.5%. They, in fact, on their major news bullet, they are saying that, or they were saying that, 40-year all-time high inflation rate, within a, a period of about three months, nurses, doctors, teachers, aviation, magistrate court, railway workers, they all had been on strike. A lot of things are going on, even in the countries we depend on. Post-COVID inflationary rate globally is hovering around 300%. UK was about 1.71. It went to 11.1. US was about 1.2. It went to about 9.1. Check. And even the continental one. When he said this, they go and quote francophone countries who do not have the economic sovereignty and that everything is enshrined in France. What I'm trying to say is that it is a fact that is hardship. Our economy has suffered. But it is a fact that it is globally induced. Two, we went through impaired productivity. No, 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 wait, wait. The, the, the globally induced pressures that have affected our economy. Mm -hmm. Which ones, and you look at the indicators mm -hmm. from our own policy interventions or indiscriminate interventions that mm -hmm. have led us to the global pressures that have resulted or contributed to us being here today. Which ones are our own fault? Which ones are our own fault? What are our own I'll, I'll policy actions that. and decisions? I'll that talk have, about that, but let me finish. No, no, if you say which Stay one? on the global before then you go to yeah. the other one. That's but all. Just clarify what, that for me. What them. I'm trying to say is mm. that <clears throat> Ghana as a country, whether government A or B, the fact that we are an import-driven economy, we have issues. I mean, we all accept it. When did we realize this? It's always been in the textbooks and also no, if, no, you look at, if, 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 if you study, if you, you study if the structure of our question, economy is the if same. If you ask a question and I'm explaining if you want us to educate the people, let me explain, then you ask me. Oh, if ahead. not, it will be banter. Mm. The Please point I'm making, mm -hmm. you can call all professors in Ghana, they should pick Bible and Quran, if I'm lying. Oh, because yeah. a lot of them have underlying political interests. Nobody will say that this government hasn't made mistake or some of the challenges are not domestically driven. But it is a fact that almost all the parameters that we have issues internally are problems we've been having even I was a child, but I knew about Rollins, his uh, former village, former president, his excellency. I knew about Kofo. I knew about uh, late Mills. I knew about former president Mahama. I knew about, I knew about Anato. All the problems that we are listening and talking about, in all periods, they, they raise those issues. If I'm lying, tell me. No, you're not lying. Unemployment, inflation rate, But didn't we know taxes. that prior to 2017? So, do you know that you are shifting the debate? No, no. We are having properly discussed things. I'm talking about global. You ask me, then I explain. Please now when ahead, I ask, you ask another thing. So I have to move and go and answer another thing. Okay. Please I don't ahead. think we are helping the listeners or viewers. That's my view anyway. Mm. It's globally because the globe primary macro indicators have been affected. If it's not true, tell me. Two, before COVID, 
from 2016 up to 2019, getting to 2020, all the primary macro indicators, in fact, our deficit was 5%, mm. thereabout. Lending rate had been reduced from almost 40% to about 20%. In fact, uh, uh, T-bills within the same period was about 22.5. It came to about 12. Our GDP was growing averagely 7%. So if you have a wife in the house, everything is going on well. You pay kids fees, you pay everything, and something naturally or unexpected happened to the community, and your work becomes impaired, and you can't pay. Then you are saying that, oh, my, 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 my husband is this. Let's be honest. There are challenges in Ghana which I agree. There are faults and weaknesses of all governments which I agree. But the severity and acute nature of what is happening, except those who think there's no God, that they will not say that. We, 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 look, supply chain was affected to the extent that item that was being imported to Ghana here, when they shipped, they were taking about $2,000, $4,000. They were taking $12,000. That one is in Hanado or former President Mahama. Then we had about 21 impaired productivity. When in our history that Ghanaians were asked to stay home, that they will be paid. I'm asking you that stay home, but you were paid. Even when that short period ended, we ran shift, five come, five stay, for almost 13 months. And we had revenue shortfall of about 12 billion. Africa grew negative 2.03. The world projection was negative 30.3. .3. We grew ne negative 0 0.4. So your debt to GDP will go up because domestically we are not raising revenue because productivity has been impaired. So government resorted to the use of debt financing and debt over GDP will be high. These are honestly, or honest, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, speak notes or speaking notes. Realization. Anybody can, when NDC guys do that, I agree. Because they are doing politics. And people have done the same. But my problem is with those called professors, doctors. Some are church elders. What do they say Some wrong? Are, oh, a lot of them, either they will speak for MPP and it's because of their interests. And it's not arguing this country any good. We go to church. Me, I'm not holy, holy. But at least the things that I can do to support my Christian life, I try small. It's not only fornication and murder that are sins. If we want this country to move on, sometime, let's move you and this MPP. And as experts in this area, speak the truth. Okay. Other than that, we'll keep on recycling the same problem. Look, if you like, like former President Mahama come, let Nanadu stay on. The same problems until, as a country, honestly, my educated brother here, myself, will move beyond politics and say that enough of always depend on others. How can we build our economy said that we will not import fruit juice and kill value chain? Me, me call London. Sorry. When I went to London, I was a small boy. Stick out the question. I, asked I was, was when did we realize this? When? when did oh, we I realized a long time. But the media, you don't listen to these things. Are you sure? You are, you are interested uh, where, in propaganda. I wouldn't. Oh no, you're not getting what I'm saying. I should have said maybe most of the media practitioners okay. and the public. They only they are only interested in uh sometimes fake news comedies, extracts, propaganda, but when you're giving something which is educative, you don't even emphasize on those things. Mm. And that is why we are all being misled and people make arbitrary decisions. The point I'm making is that mm -hmm. what is happening today, mm. it happened some time ago, it will happen again if all of us, we fail to revolutionize our mindset. If all of us fail to realize that there are wrong fundamentals. Look, there are so many not going on well in Ghana. Whether on the NDC or MPP. Not necessarily in Anadu or former President Mahama. A country that government can borrow on a domestic market at a higher rate than private sector. Three bills give you office. Now who costs them? No. This one you can't blame. What I'm saying that these are <coughs> all fundamentals that it is time we all, I mean, moved away from this, I mean, politics of who did they, who did that and like, and build our fundamentals. If not, you keep on asking me this. NDC will come. Now what's the you same? ask them the same. Another person will come. So should we continue recycling our problems? When we know, look, there are so many things we need to do right. They can do politics. They can do whatever. I don't care. Mm. I am there. You are there. If something goes on bad in our country, it affects all of us. That's my point. Mm. Doc, there's a critical issue about the actions that we have taken as a country. And we're talking about the managers of the, of the economy yeah. over, if it's a decade, 
um, over the last seven years that has gotten us here. Yeah. Because if you know the structure of your economy, and, and all of us have done some bit of economics at undergraduate, etc. Yeah, yeah. And that's basic. So I'm, I'm only spreading yeah. uh, to you my basic knowledge. And sure, he sure. has he's been somebody who has had some postgraduate education. So yeah. there's even t over the years we've interacted. Yeah. The reality that what he's saying is what ideally we should be preaching. But the reality also is, if you know that you have 10 Ghana cities, you cut your codes according to your size. Definitely. Is that not? Yeah. What have been some of our own policy indicative ideas yeah. that um, have now brought us to the point where we've racked up the budget beyond what we can uh, contain? Well, I mean, uh, I, I listened to uh, the Honorable Minister, yeah, and he did make very interesting uh, analogies, and I could see... Uh, He's asked that we should be very dispassionate in actually discussing this exactly. and sharing. Exactly. Which uh, I found very interesting. I mean, the family analogy of a husband and wife. But here's the case. If the husband probably is keen to taking bank loans with very high interest, right, what's the family situation going to be? Mm. So there's a vast difference between uh, an extravagant husband mm -hmm. who is probably taking loans and not investing them rightly, and also a husband who is prudent and could probably lose his How job. Do you or Can you relate it to So that I'm one? relating that. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. You will talk about going to the IMF for the 17th time, for the 16th time, whatsoever. If you look at or you contextualize the situation, right, I'm trying to stick to the Honorable Minister's uh, premise set for us to be dispassionate and speak to the issues as professionals. Now, you look at the last 35 years have witnessed Ghana, right, being under, yeah, being under the rule or the stewardship of the IMF 22 years. <coughs> Right, so you see how it is like. So if a government comes into power and start to talk as though, you know, you could hear, hear the finance minister say that, you know, going to the IMF is akin to the way the Israelites were treated in Egypt and all of that, right? These are premises that set us up for a very difficult engagement and actually to have a legitimacy to actually run an IMF program. How so? How so in the sense that could you not see what was happening? Now, again, we look at it in phases, mm -hmm. right? There's never been any IMF program, right, which we have front-loaded to the extent that we have been to the capital market several times. We haven't had a debt exchange, a debt exchange program before even having an IMF program. I can challenge the Honorable Minister no, we to point had. an example to me because this is a very unique case which makes it very precarious. Now, I'll come to that and I'll give you the numbers and you probably... So you speak, you no, 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 no. It's, it's rhetoric. No, give me space. talk about the causes. When no, are they? I am coming. It's never so, happened before. No, I'll tell you that. Exactly. Yeah, so... Because he brought me in. Okay. I need to... Yeah, so what's yeah, happening okay. here is that we left an IMF program three years ago. Right? 2015. The Sektepe-led IMF, Mahama IMF program ended in 2015. Uh, 2015. 2019. Uh, sorry, 2019, which is three years ago. Sure. But that was taken in 2015. Yes. Right? Yes. And we're talking about almost one billion. That is about 2% of GDP. This current three billion is about 4% of GDP. Now we're going to the IMF at the time, we have central bank depletions, a big hole in the central bank. So I'm even wondering what this money would do once it hits our national treasury, the impact of it or the real impact of it, which is why I'm quite skeptical to say that except for a program that the IMF is laying and which we may be committed to, it may be quite difficult to. Now, you look at all of these things that have happened, right? There, you look at research by J.P. Morgan, right, that point to the effect that the debt exchange alone, right, is giving bond value losses to about 50%. We've never had that before going to the IMF, right? We've been on the bond market. I mean, who runs an economy <coughs> on bonds for well over six years? That is what we have had. And if you look at the financial press, Current financial press, it's been difficult to predict the situations. I read the economists, I think, uh, sometime last night, who talk about describing our situation as pain and loom in equal measure, which makes it very difficult that there is little hope in what we are being engaged with. But then again, my worry is the transparency of this whole process, and which is why I want to urge the Honorable Minister to say, okay, look, we are engaged with the IMF. Can the transparency of it be out there? Can the commitment of it be out there? What are the con conditionalities we are preempting? Until we're able to do this, we'll still wallow in, you know, the kind of politicking of Mr. A did Y and Mr. B did Y. We finished a program three years ago. Mm. We've gone to the IMF again. 
And the very IMF that we vowed that we're never going to go to. Well, the excuse was that 2020 we had COVID and we had all the difficulties. No, but you that saw that there was a joint Britain News. Supply chain. No, but the outcome to that, there was a, a joint Britain News report that indicated the fact that the economy was already in shambles before. Uh, yeah, which is evident. Oh, was the IMF, the IMF and the World Bank mm. joint released that. Mm. Mm. If you doubt that, you can let your no, producer... No, no, that's a joint uh, release that outside. Yes. Yes. And World Bank came and Please said that COVID led Ghana this way. It was no. doing well before. Then, that's you talk true. about supply chains. That's Check, true. I am challenging you. Post-COVID, three months, supply chains returned to normalcy. Right? And at what cost? What, when you say at what cost? You can how much? What, what, what is the inflation rate now? Let him make his point. No, the interest when rate in UK now. When, 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 base rate has been increased thousand six hundred percent. So why challenge you, me. why are you cherry picking? I'll challenge you. So what are the bank rates? <laughs> so, Is it UK going to the IMF? Oh come on! What no, I'm not saying the fundamental. What are you talking about? Is no, it UK going to? But the we IMF. depend on UK. No, but it's a UK. No, we depend on the IMF. No fight. No fight. <laughs> yeah. no, okay, great, great, great. It's healthy. No, it's healthy. What I'm saying is UK's interest rate. Doing business, Steve the cost of Steve it has been increased. Seca, please let him make his point. I think no, 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 please, 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 please. So I challenge me. No, no, I'll please, you. please. <laughs> let him make his yes. point, and then please note some of these sorry, things sorry, and make sorry, and yeah. make the rebuttal. I, I think he's right. Yeah. I understand the honourable minister's yeah. uh, surface interpretation. So, so you're on that point where the comparisons are made <laughs> so, with the UK and the yeah. and the. No, he made a point which I need mm. to, you know. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, it's you part know, of he it. talks about a thousand, up, yeah. Yeah, a thousand percent thousand cost of doing thousand six hundred. Yeah, yeah, when you talk about rich. cost of doing business, it's a basket case of several items. So if that has been increased by thirty, by, you but know, but also have it in mind that for all the developed economies, yes. their 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 rates are always very low. So if you compare a, a thousand rates, let's say it was it, it was one no, percent. You know, if, if it was one percent or two percent, it's a thousand. No, then there's a difference. Let's not so mislead please. the public mm. on this thousand percent rate. Yes. Yes. Right, or, or whatever it is. Because in real terms, in real be terms, it's different. Yes. So we're, if we're going by oh, this rate, it's different. No, how much does a, a businessman need, right, to borrow on a bank in terms yeah. of rates? In the UK, no, it's no, a thousand. No, no. no, I'm just asking you a simple question. We are talking about percentage change. Please, please, go ahead. You please don't do him. the same rate. Then I'm surprised. I, no, I mean, no, you are please, cherry please, picking. Please, I'm giving us a no. Please, 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 let's not have this discussion. Right. Please, let's go. Why are you getting your figures from? Please, let's go. My figures? Yeah. 0 0.5. 2.5 to 4.5. It's, it's okay, let's go. let's go. Let's go, let's no, go. The right current now. base rate in the UK is 4.5. Let's go, let's no. go ahead. 4.5, yes. So what I'm 0.25. Yes. So what's the percentage change? It is not the same. I think that, please, let, let's go ahead. It is not the same. What is not trying the same? to please, mislead please, the public. No, order. percentage change is there. You don't understand. Either the two of you don't understand or my brother is in because he knows what uh, I'm talking about. It's the same argument we make with Ghana when we use percentages for a debt to GDP. Of course, you can't say the figure is 1,600. So don't say that we don't understand. Please go. But they had basis of about one percent. We then had almost forty percent. Please go ahead. So, and what is the four? The real times are yes. different. Please, yeah, let's go to the real times. Yeah, the real times. Let's let's, 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 let's speak to the real that figures. That's okay. Go, go ahead. Well, I'm speaking to the real times, and I want viewers oh, to know that we're speaking no, to real no, times. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, yeah, yeah, you know, based on whatever to mislead people. So you can, you know, conjure a thousand percent, a two thousand percent. That is not the reality, and this is not what happens in practical times when it comes to the functionality of an economy, right? So, so, so the question I was asking, yeah. please let's not get out of <laughs> yeah, carry on. timing and then uh, remits mm -hmm. by way of the so, debate. So, yeah. the, the question fundamentally I asked was, mm -hmm. and we have to deal with this quickly. Yeah, um, if we rack up expenditure, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that we have to make sure that we spend within our means, yeah. what sort of expenditure have we uh, put or uh, put on the budget <laughs> over the last couple of years that have made it unrealistic for us to be able to... No, but, you uh, see, under yes. COVID, we went to the World Bank. Yes. Right? Do we factor that in? We went to the World Bank under COVID. What did we do with well, that money? Well, they made it available. Yes, but what did we do with that money? What kind of investments did we go into? If we had gone into real tangible investments, can we call back and have a post-COVID analysis of the World Bank concession that we received and how it reflects and impacts upon the economy. GDP. This is a funda and to do GDP. This is a fundamental thing that we need to do. Right. So but why are we not talking about that? What were the investments that we made? Right? What were the gains we made? Right. And these are loans that probably run up to 35 years, which your grandchildren probably might so come you're up you're saying to. that we have to make sure that the monies we take from these institutions and our multilateral partner, we invest in uh, projects that will give us, projects that give us returns. Prudent okay, and effective ahead. return on investments mm. that could reflect upon the economy. But you realize that on the shopping spree that we went on the bond market, right, if those monies were involved or invested in tangible 
areas of the economy. And I will challenge the minister who is now with the trade ministry, who could give us the figures into what these monies went into, right? What kind of investments they put them in and what kind of investments they attracted with these kind of concessions. Mm. And he may be able to tell us because it's been a good couple of years, right? And five years is enough to have, you know, a postmortem of an investment project to really see whether there's viability, there's feasibility in reflecting on the real impacts that it has. But all of this has happened, yet we see nothing. And we are back to the IMF again. And the interesting thing is that, you know, the government is forcing us to jubilate <laughs> that we have had an IMF deal. And I find that really very Well, somebody asks, why not? But why should we jubilate? Is it a good thing to even go to the IMF in the first place? Should we still be under the umbilical cord of the IMF? You realize that where we have a problem, mm -hmm. ever since the president gave an address to the nation and promises that he'll be coming regularly to update us on the economy with the famous Sikam uh, PDD speech, when was the last time he returned to us? That is because they have nothing to share with the average Ghanaian people, right? If they are at work and doing something very prudent, come out to say this is what we've been doing. We all saw his COVID updates which was backed by an international project that efforts that were put around and he gave us constant updates. With this, he promises he was going to be back and be constant on our screens as much as he is or was in the instance of COVID-19. What are we witnessing today? Right, so I think that, you know, we have to look at these things and you see signals of conditionalities and all of that coming up, but the government is not even forthcoming to say that, okay, well... Like, like which signal? Well, look at how fast the president passed the... Uh, new uh, tax uh, levies into into law mm. right these are some of the signals what what, what about the right. increase in utility in utilities we're coming to that almost 20 percent increase in utility mm. tar uh, tariffs so those are the right? signs so these are preemptive measures that have been put by the government because you know that imf come with a lot of pain right because there's going to be austerity there's going to be you know and my concern here is even that it is coming too little too late in the sense that we're moving into an election year and we all know in an election year, governments tend to spend a lot, right? Under an IMF program or a fresh IMF program in an election year, <clears throat> I am interested to see how the current government will navigate this, right? So it's, it's quite an interesting, mm. it's quite an interesting uh, <clears throat> conundrum that we are in. And if you look at it, again, I don't want us to be in a case because if you look at an international uh, economic landscape, pundits are having it that we may face the Zambian situation where you have an IMF deal and you are still having, you know, debt negotiations with all of these we talk about. We are talking about domestic debt alone, 136 billion CDs. If you translate it in nominal dollar value terms, we are talking about probably about 15.2 billion. You come to the international that's bond. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. That is just the domestic. You come to international, we're talking about 16 billion. And we're just having a trickle of a three billion coming in which is coming in tranches we just have a 600 million and that we've been asked by the government and it's funded to have a hooray to this i think we've gone to the imf with right. our tails in between our mm. legs and we ought to be humble about this mm. mr gentua there's always and around this table that pension for us to always peg the difficulties we're facing with the uk the us and then also the rest of Europe or the developed world. Is that fair? And why is it not fair? Or is it fair? Who, who relates that? No. Stick our government communicators. <clears throat> I never compared. I made myself clear so that he can speak on. I said okay. that. So they do that. We uh, depend we, on Apart from them, him. They are, better, they are better economies. So once we depend on them, they are suffering this way. Ours will be worse. That's point, what I said. And point, it's a fact. Point to note <laughs> we are important. Why they shouldn't we? Roland. Because the refrain is, oh, Roland. a British crowd are suffering, Roland, so why we? Roland, Roland, Roland. Define the word bailout to me. It means that. What does bailout mean? Taking you out of a deep trench. That's my that, description. That, that who has caused, that you have caused, and you haven't been able to dig yourself out of that trench, isn't it? True. Exactly. So they are bailing us out. And when you read the IMF document, uh, everybody should read it. Very, very uh, insightful information in there. It tells you why the government and the IMF have used COVID and Ukraine as a basis. It tells you why. Because they couldn't have used anything else to support why we had gone to the IMF 
for bailout. Are you telling me that when the World Bank and some of the international institutions were pointing fingers at us with our loan situation <clears throat> and were warning us that we are heading for an area which would bring crisis to this country, would you tell me that was only COVID and Ukraine? <clears throat> I don't think anybody has said that. Oh, please, 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 stick out. Please, please, please. No, please. Let's don't stick out. No, please. You have your turn. No, 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 no. Don't chip in. Don't chip in. Stick out, please. I don't like that. I never said no, only I, COVID. Stick, stick out. I don't like that. Please, stop it. <laughs> Why do you want to pick on me? No, because you are. You you are let stop. him make his point. Stick, stick out. Stick out. Don't do that. <laughs> stick out. Don't do that. My comment isn't only on sticker. <laughs> Generally. 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 And you know something? One of the major things we haven't done, there is a fundamental weakness in the structure of our system and our economy, which, unfortunately, governments in the Fourth Republic haven't been able to finger point it. And so a little shock takes us into an area Just that spiral. becomes very difficult for Perfect. us to handle. That is the challenge. And you see, there's something called perpetual secession, whereby you take over from each, any government that you, that you when you come, you take over from them. So when as this, a continuum. As a continuum. So when this government came in, and what is quite, I won't say painful, what is quite surprising, <clears throat> we had, we, we were in IMF, weren't we? Yes. Even IMF, when they came we're in. We were being controlled small, small, yes, small. Yes, by IMF. And some of the pronouncements, pronouncements they made made it fundamentally clear that we ain't going back to this IMF again. But what was the first thing we saw? They extended the program, didn't they? It was extended. For what reason? And the fundamental weakness... Eh, in the structure of our economy should have been the first point of call, not the promises. The president should have said to us, look guys, I've come in, I have seen a lot of areas in our economy that lead us into challenges, i.e. IMF being one of them. So let's look at how we can restructure the economy in such a way that we don't <coughs> hit these Sorry. types of buffers as we go forward. Now, what were some of that? What were some of those? First point of call, private sector. Second point of call, we needed to invest in those areas that the returns were high. So I'll give you an example. We have... A refinery in Ghana, don't we? With we regards, do. With regards to gold, don't we? Mm, one, has been, one has been opened, PMMC. Wow. Yeah? Something like that. Isn't there a huge return on gold? If you invest in gold, isn't there a huge return? One. We haven't been able to bring that refinery into action because of certification. When we were putting that refinery in place, couldn't we have accelerated the certification process? Up till now, the refinery is still where it is. And quite a lot of gold is going out of this country. Very recently, we have shown that gold for oil uh, is something that tells us that if we were able to handle our gold resources very, very well, we wouldn't have to be going so the point to is. IMF. The point is, that fundamental structure that is weak in our economy, mm. we are chasing our tails mm. because we feel that if the, the, the country hits a challenging point, we go back to IMF. Mm. And it hasn't helped us. And for me, because the <coughs> government is in place, the government in place has to be blamed for not being able to handle the economy in such a way that the ordinary man, and that's the basis of it, the ordinary man can feel comfortable. When 
the president brought in uh, uh, free education, was he able to tell us how we were going to finance free education? Now, when you read this document... You didn't ask him. Listen, we asked him. We did ask him when he went to you BBC. Did, you sure did. You, yeah. I said, the BBC, did didn't we ask? Even some of us asked. And some of us... Well, even media even some of us said, look, free education is so important. At this point... Forget the four priority areas in the oil in oil revenue and use that to finance education for the next four to five years. It would have brought in a structure that was solid enough. Did we do it? In as much as free education is good, is it not tiltering at the present moment? Is it really benefiting us the way it's supposed to benefit us? And these are some of the things where some of us feel that some of the national issues, eh? As we are sitting around this table talking, mm. we need to put everybody together, those economists and all. Let's sit around. So we should have done that. We, we should. Look, when you read this document, some of the, the reliefs that they are showing, are showing, it's in there. And you ask yourself, why didn't government do this? Didn't government see it? Why is it the IMF now telling us that? These are some of the things that the program is going <coughs> to do. So <coughs> challenging, <Sorry>. difficult, <coughs> how we get out of it. And if we do not handle... Mm. Eh? Mm. These chances of money is <clears throat> coming in properly. Mm. Eh? Mm. The rest of the iron mm. funds won't come in. Okay. It's a challenge. Dr. Steven Amwal, there's a key consideration for which government has always been communicated to, that you can't keep putting in place policies that are only on the social side, making you spend without investing in areas for which you have marginal returns or excessive returns and then ultimately also making sure you check um, <coughs> the financial sector and then the losses within the sector as well and let me go to that document I talk because we've all been reading it because it's now become a public document he said the combination of large external shocks and then pre-existing pre-existing fiscal and debt vulnerabilities. The first one is a combination of what? Large external shocks. Large. Okay. Thank you. And then pre-existing fiscal and debt vulnerabilities precipitated, the way you emphasize on the large, emphasize on the next, precipitated a deep economic and financial crisis in Ghana. This is the IMF. Now, can, that, can I speak now? that will mean that we need to undertake key reforms in policy interventions. What do you think should give by way of the policy interventions to be able to make sure we stay within our means? Um, I think if you really, really dealt into my first submission, you realize that almost everything I said is the same thing that all of us are talking about. Except that me and my brother, because of policy sometimes, maybe a few issues. But what was I talking about? Wrong fundamentals, which we cannot associate that with only one regime. And then my uncle here made a good point that within the fourth republic, the governments that have come. So all the challenges we are all raising and you are raising, and it is a fact. Let's be honest with ourselves. There have been problems with us for about 30 years. This is my point. There are a lot of wrong fundamentals. That one we should accept and appreciate these things. Why are you admitting that now? Oh, who told you I never admitted? Who no, told you? The, the, the reality, I never the reality, I'm coming. I'm the coming. reality is that the government the never point, accepted never, any. That is not true. That I'm is coming. true. I'm, I'm saying that is not true. I'm speaking. You say that is true. Have I said that? But what I'm saying is that, my brother, before the COVID, what was our fiscal space? That vulnerability and the fiscal space you are talking about is because, characteristically, Ghana, we run negative effective tax rate economy. All government. What I mean is that monies outlaid to the households in our country are always more than monies we generate internally, excluding loans. So we run, <laughs> I mean, I mean, classically, a, a, a deficit economy all the time. Only about 2 million out of 31 million people pay direct taxes. There are leakages. That you can say the backstop at the head. Fine. But my brother, in a democratic dispensation, along the value chain and critical activity path, if all of us don't change our mindset and we sit here and we always think it's only Mahama and Anadu, we should forget. That's what that I'm saying. 
Now you're talking about... When did you realize this? Oh, please, stop when, when, when. You but can, that's the truth. Okay, I've, I'm telling you today. Okay. Are you answered? Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, I'm answered. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm asking you. Why aren't you in this country that the most... I mean, the final promise, is it, profound statement of the IMF was said that Ghana was doing well till the COVID. Let's be very honest. It was so emphatic without any ambiguity and debate. That one, nobody wants to talk about it. Because the parameters were doing well. Talking about their sustainability, yes, I understand as a country because of the fundamentals. How and were we am, doing well? We got to the market, borrow three billion. Is go, it go to where? The what market borrow three were billion. We, borrowing? we live in this country. The year 2000, mm -hmm. our debt to GDP was about 150%. Okay. We live in this country. When aren't we borrowing? When? If you have a country that emolument alone takes about 70% of our revenue generated internally, cut across all government. What is happening? So we know that as a country, we have wrong fundamentals. How do we fix them? So that going forward, we will be economically independent. If you don't want us to address this, then we'll do comparisons. Because if not anything at all, my brother was asking what you've been doing. I'm talking about my constituency. You can go and check. And then I'm not done my constituency. 2,200 school children have access to tables and chairs. First, first, when I became MP, you can go and check. All secondary schools, I'm not saying they have enough, but they all have computers. What's your point no, at this point? No, he was saying that what do you use the money for? So I'm telling you what the money has been used for. Every constituency had ambulance. Roads, about 60% of my roads are done. Now I drive between in San Juan and Apeja. It takes me 21 minutes. So don't let's behave, there's nothing being done. Look, 1D1F, is it not a policy framework to put money and help investors get money so that we can generate something out of it. The problem is... How many factories do we have now? I can't off head, but... Are there over 100? Yes. Yeah. So, so, coming, so which, me, which project over the last seven years have led boss, to some, 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 figures, some good import substitution boss, for a particular... Uh, you can't come and ask me anything that I don't hold a book here. Oh, I'm let me saying, explain things. Sticker, no, no. Is it that... The, I'm saying, why let me explain me, things. Sticker, why no, I, okay, don't, okay. Don't, don't, don't do this to me. I'm not fighting you. You are just doing, you are, if you think you want to do politics, just do. Because I'm not fighting you. Okay, please go We ahead. are talking. Go Have ahead. I insulted you? No, not at Have all. Have I said anything bad? Not at all. If you ask somebody to answer a question, he's answering. He doesn't even end a sentence. You go and bring another issue. And I'm saying, let me finish. You say, I'm fighting it's you. It's in line with you. The propaganda you are doing will not wash. Because mm. you know me. I'm a very smart guy. Mm. The point that I'm making is that every point anybody... And I'm not doing propaganda. I'm asking you questions. But I'm not fighting you. So why please did you make that statement? Please go ahead. Thank you. The point I'm making is that everything that my brother from NDC and Uncle here raised is a fact. But there are issues with us fundamentally for a long time. But if you want to do politics, look, my brother was talking about utilities. UK, here, yeah. electricity increased 66.7, gas 129.4. Even those who have properly structured economy. So the point I'm making is that let's take away the politics and try to make sure that. We analyze these wrong fundamentals so that as, 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 as a country, we can build. That's all that I'm saying. Okay. NDC may come. NDC may lose. If we don't all come together, CPP can come. CPP can lose. If we all don't come together and we keep on... And we are promising because Ghanaians want the promises and people want to come to power. Right now, if me, if you can't want to Ghanaians to vote for you, you tell them that. At least my first four years to restructure this, to do this. I'm not going to even do more rules. I'm not going to give free this, free this. Let's be honest, we're going to use I haven't been on a political platform. So I you wouldn't know. know. I haven't, Ghana, I haven't, assessed, that, I haven't assessed voters. So I don't know what they will I'm vote. I'm saying something to support what he said. So all of us, the key point here is that we need to renew our mindset. So Just as it. Ephesians 4, 23 says, Renew your mind. Yeah. Ghanaians, we have a lot of issues in all sectors. Right now, let's take former President Mahama Nanado, myself, my brother here, CPP man, everybody, and bring a set of people. You think these problems will be solved? Maybe they'll get better. Let's bring, oh, maybe. You never go, go to the institutions. Look, I want to give because, you Because we are, I want we are on the path you, of listen, conjecture. I want to give you assignment. Because right now we have can your I, mama I and I, I, Because when people are talking, you don't do this. It's I, only me you want no, to that is do not bad true. and forth. That is not true. You don't. That, that you, is you, not you, I was doing back and forth with him. No, you will ask your question after you spoke. He's not doing what he's doing to me. The point I'm making is that. Go ahead. The point I'm making is that go to all the institutions in Ghana. When you finish, it's unfortunate I'm traveling. Go to all the institutions, being education, 
being ministries, being media houses, being all the universities, and go and check their toilets. Go and check. We have professors there. What has Toilet got to do with what I'm what saying we're is about. that it's easy. Talk is cheap. You say they will do better. You think it is the attitude of Ghanaians we have to work on. This is a fact. But the point that I'm making is that it is always a good point that we invest our money in the areas that we can earn, as they are all saying, we all know. But why are we not doing that? Because productivity is an issue in our country. Go to the ministry, go to the agencies. Those who are supposed to come to work eight, they will come nine. Okay. Lunch one hour, they will do two Sticker. hours. Going home five, they will go four. Sticker. Always on their phones. Sticker. We need to work on this. If a leader wants to change that, there will be demonstrations. A country, you can't come out with policies in terms of taxes. NDC will say no. MP will say no. When We need to be honest with God and ourselves and change this country. Sticker. Other than that, we we'll do all this propaganda, attacking each other. Some speak out of unconscious incompetence. They don't even understand subject areas. And they will do all this against NDC and PP ourselves, and the media will be divided, and professors will talk along and depend on their individual interests. Ghana will be the same. But the fact of the matter is that one thing I'm happy about, the COVID killed a lot of people in the world. Ghana was one of the best countries we could control. Is it? Is it? It's not only Ghana, the rest of Africa. You say the, one the of the countries. The fatality you hear what was I said? low. When I say one, I didn't the rest say, of Africa. The fatality was low. Did I say only Ghana? Ghana. No, did I say only Ghana? Uh, uh, so, Sika, let me no, ask no. you. Let me ask did you. Did I say only Ghana? No, you didn't say only so Ghana. So, why are you saying this? Okay. So, Sika, I'm let me ask you. It's a one of the countries. Okay. So, don't try okay. to force yourself and get okay. issues with my statement. All right. So, so far, I think that you've brought us to a premise where. We are saying that we all need to be dispassionate. Prior to 2017, these were the issues that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia talked about. We make sure we stay within our means. We don't borrow excessively. Indeed, he did criticize in 2015 that going to the IMF was a, a mark of incompetence. Indeed, even a mark of incompetence as a phrase. He's the one who brought it into the media lexicon. If that is so, what do you think do we need to do now, led by the finance minister, if he's still going to be there, and then, well, the, um, the, the president's economic management team, by way of policy interventions and efforts to make sure that we are staying true to what you are preaching? Um, should we reduce some policy, inter some expenditure? What should I'm we surprised do? that the question you're asking, you have to go and state, oh, that Valomia said and that. Have you changed your mind before? About what? In your decisions. Have you? In your life. And why did you change your mind? Even the Bible says that it is the foolish person, the fool, that doesn't change his mind. Situations and uncertainties, risk factors, can let you change your mind. I decided to come here at 7 o'clock. I could have been late. Something could have happened. You could have been late. So let us always analyze changing of positions in the context that actually compelled us doing that thing. Don't let us take it. Tra. That one, I disagree. We decided not to go to IMF. Our fiscal space had been badly disturbed. We wanted to use electronic system because it's the business of the day to generate taxes. Parliament had been a balanced, or had been, we are, were having a balanced parliament. And we needed to go there for approval. And the opposition used that opportunity or threat to let us have this thing probably extended over about six months. And Ghanaians decided not to be part of the, 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 the obligation or perform the obligation. We didn't get the money we wanted. So people should die. I decided not to take my child to Kolebu. Something happened unexpected. My child is dying because I said I will not take my child should die. My question. I'm coming. You understand what I'm saying? So that thing, let's address that. The question of what we have to do, mm. I think. Mm. Practically. Practically. Whether NDC and PP. Mm. First thing to do, one is to control expenditure. How? One. You see, I think, and this, I'm being honest, whether you're NDC and PP, don't get me wrong. I think in our country, the way we manage our finance and the economy, there should be a new paradigm shift. In the first place, if we want to control cost, we have expenditure variables that are not necessarily impacting our GDP greatly. We need to sit down. Finance and economy is mathematics. We should be able to select those with very weak correlation with our GDP and deal away with them. Like? For instance, me. No. <laughs> when I said, I know there were some people... No, deal with the national budget or the policy. If, if I had my discretion, mm. all those living... 
government bangalows, whether you're a minister or whatever, you pay. Thank you very much. You pay money. So, so, that, that's so, if I were. So government you bungalow. You have to pay. Accommodators. Yes. How much is a bungalow in uh, uh, Osu here or cost? Mm -hmm. Some they pay like 5,000 a month. Which other one? Dollars. Which other one? I'm coming. Two. What we probably we can also do is to sit down and have properly designed frameworks for our industry because we have very weak entrepreneurial ecosystems. So what should we do? We are not supposed to import anything agricultural product in my, in my produce or product. That's, it's, it's, it doesn't even make sense. So reduce the, import. So we can only do that by sitting down to properly design the value chains with numbers. Do we know the size of land that we can grow even uh, rice on against the amount we consume annually. What is the entire value chain? What can we do? What do we need to produce that quantity every year? And these are our numbers. We have good policies, whether in this year people, but something what goes into the policy in terms of the design of the value chain and the numbers and the risk, probably we are not there. We need to do something. Three, the management of our fiscal policies and then Monetary policies. I have a problem with that. The Bank of Ghana. No, uh, no, so no, the no, finance no. minister. Uh, together. So, no, no, so Bank of Ghana has failed. LBCM. Finance minister has failed. I haven't said that. Don't do this. If you do this, I won't be happy. If you do this, I can't open up and speak. Have I told you they failed? <laughs> no, you haven't. No, said. no. What you are doing is not fair. I'm, I'm, being honest. I'm only asking. You can't say that so has failed. Okay, I've, 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 I've retracted. You're asking me my recommendations. And I'm, I'm trying to give my suggestions. Then okay. you're saying these oh, things. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, let's if go ahead. Bank of Ghana... Fiscal hadn't, and hadn't, monetary policy. Hadn't been com competent, probably this country would have gone out of jail. Oh, please. If the finance, of course, because you don't understand, you understand those things. <laughs> do, do you know how monetary policy can not, be? Not into detail like you, and but so, I understand so the financial. So you listen to me and stop what you're doing. Because <laughs> I think you are destroying to... ego trips. You need to stop that. No problem. Thank you very Go much. Ahead. What I'm saying is that <laughs> when NDC was there, on your own station here, uh, I debated the then, we're not... uh, the then, uh, uh, um, Bank of Ghana boss and under <laughs> MPP have debated them on various stations. I think on Joy. Sometimes certain primary policies are rather being dysfunctional. They are in management. We call them strategic drift. When prices are going up, all the time we want to increase policy rate, and all the time inflation rate, which is the main target, rather increases. Because we don't find the cause of it. That is one thing. If it's a cost push or demand pull, they should know all those mathematics and the correlations. That's one. Two, the issue where governments, whether A or B, borrows money on our market. In fact, it's one of the most... most, most you most, mean domestic market? Look, if government is borrowing at a higher rate than private sector, what it means is that risk-free is giving higher returns. And that's why all the banks put their monies in government securities. And when they put their monies in government securities, private sector doesn't get the money they are supposed to get. Adequate funds. The small amount they will get, interest rate will always be 40, 50, whether in this MPP. So the, those fundamentals, as a country, we need to sit down and work on them. Lastly, we should situations such as this, just as Uncle here said, look, there are a lot of good people, somewhere like Atofosin. He's a very good guy. I'm in the same profession with him. He's an NDC, I'm MPP. He's very good. Sometimes, because of politics, you do something else, me too, I'll do something else. Apart from MPP and this, there are a lot of good guys. We should come together and now, outside politics, what can we do? What can we do as a country that in two, three years' time, we will not import anything agricultural? If we do this, my boss, I'm ending with this. You see what will happen. Because when I used to go to London, my brother cleaning, washing, kitchen. Why? Because industries are working. Every segment of the So that's why you can't compare the two employed. economies, right? I'm coming. I'm not comparing the two. I make a statement based on the fact that even they, they are stronger, we depend on them. They are suffering, so we suffer. All right. So Point I was man. talking about that dependency Point relation man. and the ripple effect. Point I wasn't man. doing comparison. Is it possible that these things that you know, the finance minister maybe... But the finance has minister, it, if he hasn't done what he hasn't, hasn't well, averted, he's done. His so mind it may be if he hadn't been that finance minister, Ghana would have totally collapsed. This finance minister, I'm telling you, that your own party wants to go. My own party, <laughs> but in NDC, you think everybody was happy with Sir Tope? Even here, your boss here, you think everybody working here likes your boss? Okay.
Well, I mean, uh, so, so I think going the, on the same time, what, what should we be doing now? No, I think uh, the Honorable Sticker is blowing a lot of hot and cold in this matter. Sometimes he goes on the trajectory of a national discourse, saying that we shouldn't do politics and end up doing politics with the situation. Now, I'll give you an example, okay. right? You talk about the UK. You are comparing electricity tariffs and gas tariffs to Ghana. I'm not comparing. The UK. No, oh, no, no, no. When you were talking, he was not. No, 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 no. 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 no, no. Just listen to him. When you were talking, he was listening to me. You can talk. Mind, because you are with them. I don't mind you. What do you mean by that? I mean, with them how? say what they haven't said. That one, they argue. I never did comparison. No, 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 no. no. Uh, just you, listen to I his will not point. Just Look, unless he says what I've said. Please, speak okay, in this You Don't refer to him. Don't refer to him. Okay, I'm, refer to him. I'm not doing comparison. In this studio, I'm we talk about, you know, prices of electricity bills going <laughs> skyrocketing in the UK and gas bills and the likes of that and comparing them to Ghana. Right. I'm not is comparing the, the UK is a free market. I, I'm not comparing the, the gas and electricity sector. Ghana is privatized. It's privatized. Free market. It's right. privatized. But Ghana is free market. But VRA is Ghana free go, go ahead and talk. Ghana is Please. free market. Go ahead and talk. Go I ahead. am talking about the gas and. But I'm Don't be round up. Please go ahead and talk. You should also understand. I'm not comparing the. Go, two. go ahead. I'm not referring to this. Go, 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 can I, can I flow? go ahead and talk. Mr. Minister, can I flow? Yes, boss. All right. Thank so, yeah, but again, I'm going to challenge you. You talk about government bungalows and the likes of that. Take the initiative. Start to probably pay the rents for your bungalows. Start not to use. No, well. <laughs> yeah, start to make clear examples of the issues you are talking to be cut off. You and ask your government to I'm be. In government, I'm able to start this. Just what have you started? Just stop. At least say something that you wouldn't could have said that when MDC was there. You oh, but what have you not said about government please, bankers? Please, That's please, a colonial legacy please, that everyone please, talks about. Ahead, it's not go politics. Go ahead, go ahead. Never spoken it is not politics. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do, uh, so, so go so ahead. Good. Please go ahead. I can see you know you have stop yeah. this politics. Go ahead. And let's have Ghana. Stop what you're doing. All right. Because if I want to do politics, MDC will not even talk. Yeah. Then this is one Go ahead. Then again, we are talking about, you know, GDP issues, bringing land. But what happened to your 1D, 1F program? I thought it was to answer these programs. But the answer? Right. No, what I'm saying, but you are saying that. Okay. Well, Can you let him? When you were talking, he didn't intervene. What happened? No, no, no. no. Please, he's yeah, making a rhetoric. I'm not referring to you, Sticker. What do you mean I'm with them? I'm with yeah. them, so I can't question. No, no. Oh, so you can please go ahead and talk. Discussions. <laughs> right. So what I'm saying is that, you know, you're blowing hot and cold. Because if you talk about issues, and good enough, you are the trade ministry, right? We are saying that these issues ought to, you know, progress and be effective. You made mention of 1D, 1F being a success. Now you talk about how we can analyze and how economists can come together and develop lands and, you know, make viable solutions. But I thought 1D, 1F, which was part of your shop shopping spree from your manifesto, was made to be used to answer that. And for six years, we're still having this discussion. It means 1D, 1F is actually a failure. Why, why is that? No, but why are we still having this discussion? Ah. Right? You talked about investments, mm. right? Taxes. Mm -hmm. Again, what Sticker referred to how we struggle. What did NDC do? Targeting. How we struggle to collect Targanians. taxes. We Sticker, have invested. Can you let him talk? No. Because he's doing politics. We, are, we have politics. invested in tins, right? What you are doing is unfair. Today, if you go to register a business, you need to have a tin number. Mm. We have Ghana, uh, Ghana card and all of that. These are hardcore investments. Millions of Who is doing the Ghana card? millions of dollars <laughs> voted into it. You are doing it. <laughs> How is that reflecting in our tax revenue generation such that we are Sticker, still on stop the being table disruptive. and Please. talking about this? Stop being biased. No, Sticker, okay, I'm, I'm biased. Biased. I'm saying stop being disruptive. Stop I'm being biased. biased. Stop being stop disruptive. Being biased. Okay, no problem. Please go ahead. Sticker, you're an honorable minister. It doesn't matter. It yeah, doesn't mean I should allow you to... The world is... When you were having... I should allow you to put words in my mouth. I mean, you won't be like you. Please talk. Talk. Go ahead. All right. Okay, so if we're talking about these things, we're talking about jet to GDP, mm -hmm. right? Skyrocketing mm -hmm. above 55% and all of that. So how are we able to what, effect these changes? We could go back and make a clear comparison if you want to do the politics. But as I said, I've been talking to the numbers. He's referring to that, right? I don't want to do or want us to have politics of who has done A or who has done B. But this is a clear reflection of what has happened. We've just left an IMF program, mm. right? In any case, if the 600 come in, or the entire trench of even 3 million cities come in, we're still going to have an effective reflection of what is happening until probably about 2028. Because it's going to take a long period of time. So it's just a blip that's going to happen. So, why so what, should, what should we then be doing then? We should try, Where should we be tying the okay, knots? Okay, well, then? within the domestic space, right? How are we generating revenue, right? How are we budgeting, right? What are the budget slacks? We talk about <laughs> audit <laughs> expectation gaps and all of that that happens within this space. You no, know, they run an good. audit where you see the auditor general's report, you see expenditure, mm. you see what goes on mm. into responses and what have you in the claims. In terms of IGF, what is happening? How is that being voted back into the economy? How does that generate growth? 
So I think we have to have a broader discussion. Right. He talks about consensus building in terms of uh, the national debate and the likes of that. But I, I think that if they say they have the best or they are the best, they were voted on a manifesto. Right. Since when have we realized that this is the time to have that national discourse when you are almost at the tail end of your government? So I think that these are some of the reflections that we have to. And you are in a very sensitive ministry, which is trade, if I'm not mistaken. And that means that you hold a portfolio that allows you to actually bring in all of these discussions to free. But if we yeah, start we to cherry pick. That. Yeah, but if we start. I just joined less than a month ago. ago that's yeah, right. That. Please go ahead. Yeah, but if you start to cherry yeah, pick issues, that. right, and go for ABC, did that, and, you know. But I mean, again, we are talking about the IMF and the current program. What brought us here? Who runs an economy on board? Okay, so now we so are here. Yes. So, so now we are here. Yes. So I actually watch what we'll be doing. Okay, you now, now let's look at the IMF view. So we're going to have seven years. tranches being disbursed. Can we put that on the screen? For six years. So, so we're going to have. It was uh, then for 16 years because it's not. Okay, guys, can I, can, can I do this? Check from Bank of Ghana. Can I do this? Can I do yeah, this, please? So we have three billion do dollars going to come in. It's going to come in in three years, in seven tranches. So this month, well. Yesterday, they said today, but this month, we're getting 600 million. November, 600 million. 360 million in May next year. And then just on the eve of election 2024, in November, we're going to have 360 million coming in. And then in 2025, May, we're going to have 360 million coming in again. 360 million again in November that same year. And then the next year, that's going to be three years from now, in November, we're going to have 360 million. And this is not for free, though. I mean, it's not for free. Mr. Jantua, what should we be doing now? I mean, really, what should be the, no, the posture bro, generally? I think you haven't been fair no, to no. me because I was on the floor. Okay. You, okay. You, have you, given you, a you to say I haven't been fair, you to say I haven't been fair. No, okay, but yeah, let me, you know, <laughs> because the point is that if we are still talking about issues and I don't know mm -hmm. why we still are not premised on the report or the joint report of the IMF, the British Roots Institution of the economy before now, right, if you get what I mean. Mm. Then again, <laughs> in terms of this tranche coming, what is the government going to do with this? Right? But what I am, the fundamental point, I, the picture I want to pay, paint to the good people of Ghana is that we have never been in such a precarious economic situation whilst approaching the Britain Woods Institution or the fund, mm -hmm. right? which, i.e., central bank reserves, almost depleted. Right? We are talking about domestic debt, 137 million. A billion, in dollar terms, 15 billion. We're talking about external bonds that are almost about 13 billion. So if you look at this and the inflation and you look at debt to GDP ratio, we've never been in this state. And for the very first time, we are going to the IMF when we are defaulting, right, on our bond. No, but, GDP is not true. Please go ahead. We've had 153% before. So please check your facts. Please go ahead. Right. The year 2000, 153. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Right. And GDP, if you look at the economic you. picture or outlook, right, the program that we ended in 2015, Whatever we had post that has been a reflection and an impact of that program, mm. right? Why is it that we are not giving recognition to the previous government for or the Sektepia Mahama led administration for actually instituting that? That we have a smooth running of a program. And again, you look at these things, which I said, look, you look at the value of this. We are talking about the NDC or the previous government, which went for the 2015 uh, IMF concession. That was about almost 1 billion, which is a reflection of 2% of GDP. What are we going for? 3%. At current rates, right, and within this e economic climate, at 4% of GDP. So it tells you that even though it's the IMF, this is quite a tough one we are going for, right? But in praise of what the IMF would say, the IMF is a, is a supernatural, it's more like multinational organizations and the likes of that. So their diplomacy, when it comes to, you know, talking to the outside world, should not be contextualized within domestic engagements of the reality on the ground. When we do that, we mislead people. Okay. And I think that's an unfair way to take policy discussions. Okay. Mr. Jantua, what should we be doing now? I've been a spectator today. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good listening. You know, Roland, the most important thing is to look at the parts of the economy where we are losing. And for me, the major things, corruption, wastage in the economy, 
wastage in the economy, <coughs> strength of the city, mm. exchange rates. Because look, all this money that is coming in, a little shock where we get CD depreciation, it would affect us. Apart from that, private sector, let me tell you, let me read something that the IMF uh, 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 MD said at the end of her statement. She said, and I quote, an ambitious structural reform agenda is being put in place to reinvigorate private sector-led growth by improving the business environment, governance, and productivity. What is this ambitious structural reform that we haven't been able to do? Because when you look at private sector today, eh, they are swallowing in difficulty. I'll give you an example of Stickers 1 District 1 factory, a kumfi juice. It is not Stickers 1 District. Well, it's government. Okay. And they mention me and I respond. He's, government. <laughs> He's in the government, isn't he? But you say I'm biased. I guess <laughs> it's no, no, well, 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 it's well, not for the government. Well, it's Ghana. Well, it was it was your Ghanis. it was your government that brought it into being. It's for Ghana. Oh? Let me give you an example of a comfy juice. A comfy juice has got some orders for export. They are having to curtail domestic production for the export and why is that so because they don't have the wherewithal mm. to do both so you set they up a factory what? they don't have the wherewithal to do both to do both the domestic they production the capacity. Yeah. and to do yeah. the export mm -hmm. eh? so you set up a, a factory <clears throat> that you know has added val value especially in agricultural sector why do you de why how come they are denied in making sure that domestically they can still work and they have to they have to concentrate they have to concentrate more on the export and curtail domestic how does that work out how does that work out what do you mean who's causing that they don't have the capacity to do both if you compare them to an international institution that is here. Huh? <coughs> that is here. The international institution who is also doing orange juice and pineapple juice can do both. And so their markets here get sucked by other competitors. How does that make them profitable in the long run? And so for me, those areas that create challenges, corruption, wastage, lack of strong financial uh, 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 capacity, of these are factories would create problems for us mostly for me the depreciation of the cd look at all those figures you put there really 360 million going forward what really can it do for us look i heard the um is it not isn't all the intent around this well, coming in the credibility I heard, it creates i heard and then I also heard, make sure I heard that the finance minister this morning and he was saying that the funds that are coming in are going to be directed at government programs. Mm. What government programs are these? Yeah, come again. Should, we, should he not tell us the funds that are coming in first is going to pay for bank uh, uh, balance of payment uh, 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 challenges? And some of these programs that we're going to look at, itemize those programs for us. Because you just say it like that, and some of us come and sit here, and we are cherry-picking what those programs are. The transparency issues with regard to how we communicate these things is a problem for me. Where we are now, the transparency and the accountability issues is key for us to build confidence in government. But you know something? Going forward, eh? mm -hmm. whether it is NDC that comes back, whether it is MPP that comes back, whether by the stroke of luck, CPP comes in, it's going to be a challenging time for the next 10 years because of where we stand. And that is where the problem is. Who is telling us at this material <coughs> moment how the economy is going to run between now and 2030 with the kind of debts 
we have because the IMF loan is, is, is it's not free. It's not free. All right. It adds to our debt burden, doesn't it? Mm. So we should be able, and I'll continue to say this, the one person who can help us sit and work these things out together is the president. Right. He needs to give us he that needs, olive, he, he, needs he needs to, to lead to the way. show that olive branch. Okay. That, guys, we've gone for this. However, mm. A, B, C, D, E are some of the things we should look at. Let's see how. Together, together, eh, we right. can sort this thing out. All look, right. Okay. Look, okay. No, you're no, stopping me. No, I haven't stopped you. Let, Please go ahead. Let me finish. Mm. <laughs> when the president did his inaugural speech, when he was being sworn in, did he tell us to take us to IMF? Did he tell us he would take us to IMF? When President Mahama, this is not grass speech, did he tell us to take us to IMF? What they were telling us was they were hitting the party that was in power and hadn't done right, haven't we gone to IMF? So I expect any president that is voted for in 2024, given his inaugural speech, he should tell us when times are hard, will you take us to IMF or you take us to IMF? In the inaugural speech? Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah. No. <laughs> so that we can hold you St to it. Stika says, <laughs> says, says this is force majeure. He said, he said, it was not envisaged. He said it isn't something. It's only a fool doesn't change his mind. Oh, come on. Actually, come he's, on. he made that expression. When there's force, the when there's, when there's, <laughs> okay. like when so the says, the Bible says, Bible says when there's, no, you don't know it's in the Bible. When there's force no, majeure in on. your household, you, you what do you do? When there's force majeure in your household, what do you do? Tell me. Do you not plan sometimes towards force major? So it's raining now. And sometimes you live in an area where it floods. You know the flood can come into your house. What do you do? Do you sit and wait for the flood to come? Mm. We should be able to preempt some of these things as a government. We should be able to look over and above some of the challenges that we have always repeated. Because if we don't do that, we chase our tail all the time. And unfortunately... That is what we are doing. We are chasing our tail. We've gone back to IMF, haven't we? Okay, Jake um, Asamoah says utility bills are, rock, are skyrocketing in every in in all, in every month or every month. I think that's it. recently utility tariffs have been increased and in, and here um, we are to be charged with another increment in the next month. And says God um, bless us. Okay. So, um, Williams Kwabena Bechi says, the first one is for government business. Very simple, <laughs> but uh, just, uh, just making fun. And um, Washington Yankee says that awesome and in-depth expositions by senior fellow Dr. Khalid Sherry. Okay, issue based, fact supported, I do understand that. And then this one uh, is from Ose Bones who says, Steka is making great analysis. I love his interventions for go um, government to make sure they charge its appointees or those in public bungalows um, rent. So that's one there. Um, this one also from Edwin Boating, who says that the minister is making a lot of sense. He seems to know the, the economics of the country very well. He should tell the finance minister that well. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Okay. And then also we have this one from Guy G. Guy G says that you, you went to invest your Cape Coast? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. So Guy G, Guy G says I should tell you good morning. And that um, he says, so this is a message. Uh, my, my regards to my beloved brother and good product of UCC, Dr. Sharif Mahmoud Khalid, comrade, as we call him <coughs> back in UCC. And this is from Guy G, Cantomenta Kra. Now, stick up. We only have two minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. So I'll, um, I'll tell you. I think now, uh, you're, you're, you're concluding. Yeah, right? I think let's understand the fact that taxes as well as utility bills and co are calibrated in nature. Mm. When an ad okay, we remember, let's see, it. We, for domestic and then uh, commercial, we reduce them. I've forgotten the respective proportions, but 150%, 130%. Mm. <laughs> it's a fact. So, as and when we are having challenges with our fiscal space and other things, government need to generate money mm -hmm. and try to mitigate the impact of this debt to GDP issues. Mm. It goes up a little bit. We all know. <laughs> Elsewhere, we pay more gases. I'm not comparing, but I'm saying that we want all the good things in the world. But when it comes to we paying for those things to be used, 
Where I agree is what Mr. Jantua said that <clears throat> how we put what we generate to good use mm. is very important because Ghana here, sometimes you think it's only the politicians. Go down even the public sector, the wastage. So all of us should make sure that. But Mr. Jantua, I beg you this point. The next 10 years, not only Ghana, because of what COVID and Russia did to the world, <clears throat> the hardship will be there. Some will get yes earlier, some will get yes. And look, uh, debt replacement, Uruguay, uh, Jamaica, all of them, even UK did before. We, I mean, exchange this debt and where you, you expand the moratorium or maturity, sorry, replace it with the low. It's there. Uh. I mean, you know, it's one of the recovery, whatever, or uh, it's one of restoring the, uh. Uh, policies. But Mr. John Trout, today, forgive me about this, private sector. He's talking about a config cannot do this and that. Now I ask him, now who calls him? Let's be all honest with ourselves that mm. the private sector actors in Ghana, we also have a long way to go. Let's be very honest. It doesn't matter who is in government. If right now I have money, which I don't have, like if I have like 100 million, I'll bet you give 1 million to all the, most of the private sector actors here. No interest rate after two years, go and see. So as a country, so I'm always saying that even governments that help private sector to get funds, whether NDC and PP, should go beyond that and help them work along the value chain and try to also, okay, I try to also develop that habit and culture that can let them also sustain and grow their also own businesses. Because there are two risk factors, systematic, which is general. That one I agree. Maybe government policies, international, global, national, they are there. But the unsystematic aspect, we always gloss over. Company-specific risk factors. Most of even big companies, so-called in Ghana, they don't even set annual budget. They don't set annual budget. They don't do any appraisal before starting businesses. They don't have any pricing policies. They don't even separate ownership from control. So as much as we are talking about the systematic risk factors, government and the system and the world and the economy, we should also concentrate on the private actors, what they are doing. Mm. Other than that, government will do everything. It will still collapse. Yeah. Two minutes for you. Yeah, well, uh, thanks very much, uh, Roland. And because uh, I want to really contextualize things and give us a picture. In two of minutes. What, yeah, in two minutes of what is happening. Because uh, financial literacy is very important when it comes to these discussions. That's what will help you know, as a neutral factor when it comes to these issues of accusation of one being partisan or not, right? For instance, when we start to make comparisons in utility charges and talk about the UK specifically, when I talk about the free market contextualization, when I talk about the free market contextualization of this, <laughs> in Ghana, the ECG and the VRA are a monopoly, right? How many power supplies do we have? Just only this, right? We're talking about the UK, which has been decentralized, which has been broken down and given to the private sector these compete for that. So if we start to make these, we lose that. Or this apple and orange comparison does not really reflect our reality. That is not true. Now we spent money. We're talking about the cost. We spent money. It's a common we've parameter. We spent money. Go ahead. Taxpayers' it's a money. Common parameter. We have spent taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. It's not about We've spent taxpayers' power. money on these STEM systems for tax or effective tax generation. Right. Can we quantify to say we spend X amount of X million of dollars? This is how much revenue. We joke to post to see what is happening. We've transited or we alongside that we have a parallel system of, you know, uh, Ghana cards. How much are we spending and how much is that also helping within the tax, re within tax revenue issues? Right. These are very important. We talk about globally issues happening within debt exchange and the likes of that. You look at the JP Morgan research. We're talking about 50 percent of the value. That would be good. That would go. Is that the reality that is happening? So by and large, in sum, what I am talking about is that for us to have these effective issues, mm. we, at the IMF is not a bad place to go to. Can we all accept that, look, we, need, we can go to the IMF, the UK has been to the IMF, the US, and not the likes of it. Yeah, but not bastardize it, but see how effective we can. Mm. And my fear is that we are beginning to engage in the politics and even neglecting what program we have at hand when we receive this tranche of investments and how we are going to turn that around to actually propel the economy. That should be our concentration. Mm. Two minutes for you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Gentle. Roland, with Sorry. the kind of natural resources we have in this country, we shouldn't be a poor country. Mm. It's, got to, do, it's got to do with the, manage, the management of these natural resources we have. And if we do not build capacity in the local companies to take over Mm -hmm. Going forward, we would have this cycle 
Because look, any foreign company that comes into this country has personal well, interest no, and no see. personal friends. They have mm. personal interest and no personal friends. So if we categorize local content in terms of parties, look, I don't understand why a government comes in and they need political figures to head SOEs. How? Why? Why should it be so? Why can't you get professionals, technical people, to handle some of these SOEs? So that when a, a new government comes in, there's continuity. What happens when a new government comes in? All the political heads who have been put in, they are all... And we start afresh. Start afresh. And we've built capacity in them. They start with absolutely nothing. They end with having knowledge of One it. Step forward, and then we back. take them out. Bring new people in. Wastage. Wastage. And so that fundamental bit of the economy that is creating th that invisible uh, uh, spending and wasting that we don't see, we've got to take care of it. Because if we spend and we don't take care of the invisibles, we come back to where we are. Well, that's why we are where we are. Well, I have this one from uh, Money Me Money. Money Me Money, good morning to you. Your regular uh, watcher of the show says, uh, Ostika is saying, is that the government has failed and we shouldn't do politics with it. I'm not sure that's what he's saying. Be careful. Marcus. <laughs> that's what he wanted to read. <laughs> I've read it, yes. That's yes, what I read. He sent it, so I read it here. You can take it. It's, it's in the stream. Uh, Marcus, Marcus, please let's leave the Bible out of uh, body politics. That's, that's the special, that's what is special about that book. And then also, um, we have a couple of them. I have this one from Don Carlos. Don Carlos says, the government will divert IMF funds into sustenance of government interventions because if be there, the chop chop go happen. Well, we'll see how that goes. Hmm. Um, we're, we're taking a break. When we come back, we do have one. We have the latest sports update. We also have some great conversations coming up. I have to tell you that right here on the show, it's where you have to be. Apart from us getting to know that Roma, <laughs> led by Jose Moreno, has uh, some of the best highlights for us to give you this morning. We'll also bring you the latest update, the MVCA 9th edition, the latest right here on the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back.